Everyone, good morning. And welcome to the first 3D Prosthetists Meet Printers Conference. So just to let everybody get to know me a little better, my name is Albert Shee. I'm a trauma surgeon here at Johns Hopkins, but I'm also a Lieutenant Commander of the Navy Reserves in the Medical Corps. And I'm also very proud to say I'm an Enabling the Future volunteer. I want to really say some special thanks to the Hopkins team that put everything together, the beautiful arena, the breakfast, all of the kind of fine details that you see around. Ron, Barbie, are you around? Ron, thank you. Christine, Kristen, Sarah, the hard, heart of the Hopkins team, thank you so much. I also want to send out a very special thank you to our gold sponsors. Um, there were initially, when we came up with the concept of the conference, it was a little stressful, wondering if we could support this financially and whether we could get it together in such a quick time. And just by the wonderful turnout we see here today, it's been a huge success. And none of this would have been possible if it weren't for Dankmeyer. Mark Hopkins from Dankmeyer, are you here? Mark will be speaking during lunch, so be sure to go down to the concourse area to hear him give the uh, lunch sponsorship um, talk. Troy Farnsworth from Hanger Clinic is right here. And the prosthetist, Meet Printers, Ultimaker, is also a gold sponsor. I know Xander is here. Are they, I think they might be downstairs, but Ultimaker is very kind to actually donate a printer to our lab, which is responsible for the hands that we've printed um, to date. So. One more housekeeping for any of you with small children that are here. We've actually set up a children's play area. It's downstairs beneath the registration sign. And um, there are a lot of movies. Frozen is there. I know that's very popular nowadays. A lot of toys and things. So if you need a break, feel free to go down there. It'll be open all day, all night, um, as well as having a little sleep area if you need that as well. So guess how many people are in this room today? We have over 400 people registered, and people are still walking in, and the numbers are still adding on today. Absolutely incredible. I want to share with everybody how unique, really, this gathering is today. In this room, we have future hand recipients, we have seasoned hand users, we have physical therapists, prosthetists, physiatrists, biomedical engineers, students, the diversity of backgrounds within this room is truly incredible, and a gathering of this type is absolutely unique and absolutely unheard of. And why are we all here today? Really, we are all gathered today, not only to learn, but to share our knowledge. So I want to thank all of you for coming here and welcome you to Johns Hopkins, but also welcoming all of you to the Enabling the Future community. So I think it's absolutely appropriate that we're doing the first 3D prosthetic printing conference hosted here in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins. For Hopkins prides itself in being at the absolute cutting edge of technology and innovation. And 3D printing really embraces all of these ideals. I have dedicated my clinical research for providing advanced technologies for people with traumatic injuries. And I really do get to work with some of the world's most intelligent minds on a daily basis. And if you guys don't mind, um, just bear with me for a little bit. I'd like to point some of those individuals out today. So some of the people from the Applied Physics Lab, I know he's sitting right here. Bobby Armiger, if you could stand up. Mike McLaughlin, I haven't seen him yet. Courtney Moran, Brock Wester, Matt Johannes, Kapil Catville. If anybody from APL is here, please stand. My family from Infinite Biomedical Technology, Rahul Kalicki. Megan Hodgson, Martine, and now my Enable family. And also, anyone from IVT, if you're here, please stand. Ivan Owen, the creator of the very first 3D printed prosthetic. Jen Owen, Peter Brinkley, where's Peter? Peter Hay, <laughs> Jeremy Simon. Where's Jeremy? We gotta point Jeremy. I'm like a Jeremy groupie. I see him on YouTube all the time. Is he downstairs working? He's always working. And John Schull, please stand. Enable family, meet my extended bioengineering family. 
and it's wonderful to have all of you under the same roof together today. Both of these families have dedicated themselves to improve the lives of others in the field of prosthetics. And both families are making historical impacts on people's lives today. Johns Hopkins is home of one of the world's most advanced prosthetic limb systems. It's the Applied Physics Lab Modular Prosthetic Limb. And pictured here are just a few of the engineers who have made and really dedicated lives their lives to make this really technological miracle possible. And I have to say, the field of prosthetics always seems to draw on a certain personality type, because I've noticed some common traits among all of those within the field. From the engineers to the enable volunteers, all of you are extremely brilliant, dedicated, and serving to others. This is a video of Matt Para, who is actually operating the modular prosthetic limb using teleoperation. Folks, this is completely motor capable, not only highly dexterous in a motor sense, but it has 100 sensors within the arm that can feed back pressure, temperature, acceleration, and torque. This is essentially a completely replacement limb in every sense of the word. I realize this may disappoint some of the audience members um, here. The only thing it can't do is the Vulcan salute. <laughs> but we'll, we'll take it. And in this field, there's only one thing that's more amazing than getting to work with all of these people. It's the patience and the privilege of working with them. My life has truly been enriched by their friendship and courage, always willing to give of themselves so others can benefit. Folks, this is Johnny Matheny. He is my first targeted muscle renovation patient, as well as Johns Hopkins' first targeted muscle renovation patient. Through Johnny's courage, he's undergone a surgical procedure that allows him to control the dance prosthetic limbs. Johnny, do you mind standing? This man has appeared on 60 Minutes, CNN, and NPR. He has volunteered countless hours in different clinical trials. He's come down, I don't know, driven how many times, stayed at my house, and participated in demonstration after demonstration and demonstration, all in order so others can benefit and also that this field of prosthetics can prosper and get the noted attention it truly deserves. And as a result, Johnny has actually tested and trialed every advanced limb system that has ever been created known to man. And just the other night, he said that experience wouldn't be complete until he gets his first 3D printed arm, which we're gonna plan on working on this week. Johnny, thank you for being here, and thank you for your friendship. Believe it or not, that is Johnny eating with chopsticks with a prosthetic limb. <laughs> so since becoming an Enable volunteer, together with my lab, our relationship with Kennedy Krieger, we've printed and delivered five separate designs in different hands. Brian Monroe from Hanger Clinic has created a low-cost um, shoulder harness that was made out of backpack uh, nylon straps for about $10. Austin Sinclair, who is a, a mechanical engineer at Hopkins, who's also in my lab. We've started creating a, adaptive devices as well, together with Mark Hopkins, that can fit on traditional prosthetic devices. I want to pause all of you and thank the Enable community for something you've given me that is absolutely priceless. Moments. Moments when John and the crew first came and visited, and there was a palpable energy in the room where the conception of this conference was just thought of and actuated and now we're all sitting here today. Moments like the time with Griffin, who's in that picture there in the right-hand corner. One of the first patients that we printed one of our hands from our lab for. And nothing beats the moments we experienced that day than some of the quotes from Griffin's mom. My son Griffin loves his. When he puts it on, he's immediately able to pick up a ball and throw it with his left hand, something he's never been able to do before. And people that recall Griffin, when he picked up that ball and he threw it, they say he let out this, this joyous squeal. Well, I have to admit to this audience, that really didn't come from Griffin. That might have come from this person standing here behind the corner for how amazing that experience really was. He's wearing it a lot. It's glow in the dark, so he's pulling people into bathrooms and showing them. I can see him walking a little prouder when he has it on. 
So Griffin, Enable, Quinn, thank you for that memory and thank you for that moment. I'd like to share another quote from a different type of mother, Mother Teresa. I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples. Pictured here are just a few of the Enable leadership, and in the center, the world map of Enable volunteers, and it just keeps growing. John, it has been an honor to see the ripples you've created change the world. Ladies and gentlemen, John Scholl, the founder of Enabling the Future.